Let me tell you about a place you may not have heard of. Have you ever heard of the School of Americas? Or maybe by its more recent name, WINSEC, the Western Hemisphere Institute for Security Cooperation. Well, if you haven't, that's okay. It's not exactly the most well-known organization, but maybe it should be. The School of Americas is a U.S. defense institution in Fort Benning, Georgia, that trains military personnel from across Latin America. The school's curriculum for its thousands of international graduates allegedly promotes democratic values and respect for human rights. Graduates that ironically include some of Latin America's most notorious human rights violators. Well, since 1990, a nonprofit organization called School of America's Watch has been working to monitor and maintain a database of WinSec graduates who have been responsible for human rights violations. Last April, a group of five activists, including Father Roy Bergois, the founder of the organization, were arrested in front of the U.S. Capitol after a demonstration demanding that the school be closed. Now, my producers were able to catch up with Father Bergois just this morning before his trial. Here's a clip of what he had to say. Our greatest enemy in the United States is ignorance. We know very little about U.S. foreign policy. But this School of the Americas, now called the Western Hemisphere Institute for Security Cooperation, is really a symbol of what our foreign policy has been all about in Latin America for decades, basically about uh, protecting our economic uh, self-interest. It's about exploiting cheap labor and their resources. And we have allied ourselves with militaries who have been very, very oppressive toward their people. Father Bergua makes a good point here. Our biggest enemy in this country is, in fact, ignorance. But WINSEC has been under scrutiny for years. In 1996, the Pentagon was forced to release training manuals used at the School of Americas before the name was changed. The manuals advocated targeting civilians, extrajudicial executions, torture, false imprisonment, and extortion. Yep. Those are the values that this U.S. school has been promoting for the U.S. military's counterparts in Latin America. Here, check this out. U.S. Army Major Joseph Blair, who's a former official at the school, once said, quote, the doctrine that was taught was that if you want information, you use physical abuse, you use false imprisonment, you use threats to family members, you use virtually any method necessary to get what you want. And if you can't get the information you want, if you can't get that person to shut up or stop doing what they're doing, you simply assassinate them. And you assassinate them with one of your death squads. Yep, that's just Professor Blair explaining the syllabus. So, is it any wonder that the former U.S. Congressman Joseph Kennedy once said that the U.S. Army of School of Americas is a school that has run more dictators than any other school in the history of the world? But hey, that's okay since WINSEC maintains that no school should be held accountable for the actions of its graduates. But Father Bergois' efforts to raise awareness are paying off. Several Latin American countries have already declared they will be cutting ties with the school. Check it out. Within the last two months, two countries after we met with their presidents, President Correa in Ecuador, President Daniel, Correa, Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua, these two presidents within the last two months have said this school, in their words, has caused a lot of terror, a lot of suffering and death to our people. It should not exist. We are withdrawing our troops from this school. There have actually been attempts by Congress to shut down the school. A bill in 2005 aiming to abolish the school had 134 co-sponsors in the House Armed Services Committee, but it failed. And in 2007, the McGovern-Lewis Amendment was an attempt to remove funding from the school, but was just six votes short of passing. It seems that moral arguments for closing down the school always seem to fall short, and protesters are having a hard time getting their voices heard. Listen to what one of the defendants for this morning's trial had to say about their attempts to reach lawmakers. And I think the big thing is that here in this country that we're supposed to be able to march down the street, freedom of expression, the fact that we are blocked off in front of Congress where the decisions are made about this country um, shows, you know, the complicity, it shows that the U.S. government has something to hide in their foreign policy, that our voices aren't being able to be heard loud and clear. The bottom line is that not only we know that the United States engages in torture, but it's a practice that we openly promote through international military training facilities on American soil. And what's worse is that this is easily one of the biggest and most underreported problems. 
Now to help us talk more about the School of Americas and U.S. foreign policy in Latin America, I'm joined by RT producer Rachel Kurzius. How's hey, it going, Abby? Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. So how is it that this school is continuing to operate when it's literally birthing consecutive generations of military dictators in these countries? Sure. Well, from the perspective of politicians in the United States, they really have very little reason not to continue the School of the Americas. And as we've seen, it's flourished under both Republican and Democratic presidents alike. So it's really a bipartisan issue that both parties can get behind. In terms of the Latin American countries that continue to fill these schools with their students, what we're seeing is that it's really a self-perpetuating issue. What happens is people who have been trained at the School of the Americas then ascend to positions of power and go on to send their underlings to go join the School of the Americas, and the cycle just continues on and on like that. Yeah, it's really uh, interesting, isn't it, that we are training these these uh, would-be, you know, repressive dictators, essentially, and then consecutively just more generations are trained. Fueling that fire. Through, yeah, fueling the fire. Uh, but this past summer, Ecuador and Nicaragua actually just said that they would no longer send their citizens to the School of America. So is this a good sign that countries are finally saying we're not going to participate anymore in this? I mean, what, what do you think about that? Sure. Well, I think it's always a good sign if there are some countries saying, okay, we're done here, no more. But let's look at the countries that are finally saying no. We're talking about Ecuador and Nicaragua, two countries that for quite some time have positioned themselves as pretty anti what they call Yankee imperialismo. So <laughs> essentially, we're looking at Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua. He actually actually helped start a revolt against a U.S.-backed dictator as part of the Sandinistas that was successful in 1979. He's been in power, the Sandinistas have been in power for a good portion of the period since then, and they've still been sending people to the School of the Americas? I mean, that boggles the mind. And then look at Rafael Correa, who just earlier this summer decided no more sending people to the School of the Americas. Correa's been more famous recently for positioning himself against Western powers, most recently in deciding to give Julian Assange um, you know, uh, asylum, asylum yeah. exactly. So what we're seeing is if, if these are the countries that are only now, decades and decades after the School of the Americas founded, saying no more, I mean, any progress is progress, but it's kind of depressing yeah, to think that. Yeah, what took these countries so long, especially I know, this it, hard it really line against shocking. the United States? Um, I wanted to show you a map. This is a, kind of a map over the last couple of decades of the increase in U.S. military installations and interventions in Latin America. Most, most are just all, you know, in Central America right here. Um, you know, two countries which have sent the most students to the School of Americas, Colombia and Honduras. Um, and they've also seen huge increases in U.S. military intervention, troops on the ground, and, you know, all in the name of the drug war, of course, Rachel. But, you know, in, in hindsight, or not in hindsight, I guess, just re in reality, I mean, looking at these countries, their situations are terrible. I mean, arguably, they're, they're two of the most uh, violent countries in the entire world. What is going on here? Well, I think that these are two countries that depend pretty heavily on U.S. aid. And in order to get that U.S. aid, it's not like we're giving away money for free here. You have to start towing the party line. And we've seen that time and again where people's aid is threatened as soon as they start saying, you know, maybe we're not going to send students here this year. Maybe we're not going to allow U.S. troops to come in and do whatever they'd like. And maybe we're not going to allow our own officers to torture civilians. So I think that when you're looking at these countries that depend on the United States for economic and military aid, you're going to see that they're, they're going to keep sending those students there. Why do you think that so many people don't realize? I mean, here's the U.S. is branding the school as necessary, even saying that it's all in, all in the names of promoting democracy and human rights, but we're pretty much exporting torture systematically through the school. Wrap it up really quickly because we're almost out of time. But I mean, how is this in U.S. interest, promoting torture? Well, we've seen it time and again. People are branding it used to be anti communism, and everyone thought, well, communism isn't evil. We need to get rid of that. And then it was anti terrorism, which we're still kind of dealing with. We need to get rid of that. Anti drug terrorism, same thing. It's going to be the war on insert your social ill here <laughs> and that's going to be what the school of the americas is saving people from next thank you so much for coming on and, yeah and so talking glad to be here it.